Hey everyone, I'm Looseberry, and today I'm going to show you how I made these butterfly wings. This tutorial is going to be a little different than my usual videos because this is going to be a sewing project. In my other video, I showed you how to make these small, basic wings for a doll. In this video, I'll show you how to make these full-size costume monarch butterfly wings. Some things you'll need for this tutorial are a sewing needle, a pair of scissors, some regular and some flat pins, some craft wire. I'm going to use this 22 gauge wire because that's what I already have. It's a little thin, so I'll be layering the wire to give it more strength. You'll also need something to cut your wire. You'll also need some tool in the main color of your butterfly wings. I'll be using a yard of orange tool. I have this styrofoam board that I'm going to use to pin all around the outline of my wing design. You could use a cushion or a cardboard or a mattress. I had this foam left over from a purchase, so I thought I'd put it to some use. You'll also need a template to base your wings on. If you like, you can just look online for a set of wings that you like and use that, or you could use the templates that I made. In my other video, I used this simple pattern that I made, inspired by Tinkerbell. In this video, I'm going to use this monarch butterfly wing template that I made. You can find these pictures by clicking the link at the top of the screen. That will take you to my website where you can download the images. If you like, you can use regular sewing thread to fasten the tool to the frame. I used black thread for my monarch wings. If you like, you could also use embroidery floss. Just make sure you're using a color that matches the edges of your wing design. And to decorate the wings, I'll be using a few different colors of DMC brand embroidery floss. If you want though, you could just use regular thread for the entire project. For my basic wings, I just used two of these shiny mint green flosses since the wings were so small. But for my full size wings, I used four of this shiny black floss, four of this orange floss, one shiny white floss, and one shiny yellow floss. If you're making a different style of wings, you can use different colors, but you may need different amounts of each depending on your chosen design. And I'm going to sew my wings onto this green shirt when I'm finished. I cut the bottom of the shirt into a leafy pattern. I'm going to begin by printing out my wing designs. There are several ways you can do this. First, I'm gonna open the template that I want to print in Microsoft Paint. If you're using a different type of computer, the program you have installed might be different. I'm going to use the upper and lower half template of the wings so that the image will come out larger. If you want to make smaller wings, you should use the full wing template instead. I go into more detail about making the smaller wings in my other video. If you're making the full-size wings, make sure to go into Preferences and switch the settings to Landscape rather than Portrait to take up more of the paper. If you want to save on ink, select the Draft setting and to save on color ink, select the black slash grayscale setting. If you want, you could make the wings even larger. To do that, you could go into Page Setup and find the Fit to Pages boxes. Then enter either 2x1 or 2x2 to enlarge the picture and use either landscape or portrait depending on how big you want the picture to be. But if you do that, you'll have to tape your papers together to form the full wing and you'll have to use more material. So I'm not going to do that, I'm just going to print each of the upper and lower halves of the wings on the landscape setting. If you like, you could color in the design using markers. If you're doing this, make sure to be careful about the color bleeding through to whatever is under your paper. Since I use markers to color in my design, I can see all the lines on the other side of the paper, which will make it easier to follow the pattern on the other side. Now I'm ready to start making my wings. First, I'm going to shape the wire by pinning all around the edges of my design through the paper into my styrofoam board, just like I did in my other video. Then I'm going to wrap my wire around the pins to copy the outline of the wings. I'm going to do this for all four parts of the wing. If you want to see how I did this in more detail, see my other video. Now that I have all of my wireframes shaped and cut, I'm going to cut my tool the same way I did in my other video. Since with tool you get a more vivid color if you layer it, I'm going to use four layers of tool for each wing. I already cut four pieces of tool that are a little bit bigger than my wireframe. I'm going to make sure none of the material is wrinkled. Then I'm going to pin the tool down around my design, just like I did in my other video. And cut through all four layers with about an eighth of an inch of excess all the way around.
Then I'm going to place a few pins through all four layers to keep them together while I cut the rest of my tool. I'm going to do this two times for the top of the wing and two times for the bottom of the wing, so that I have four layers of tool for each part. Next I'm going to roughly sew the tool around the wireframe, just like I did in the other video, except this time I'm using black thread to match the monarch design. But you can use any color you like to match your wing design. I'm going to sew the tool onto all four of my wing frames. And just like in my other video, I'm going to cover up the wire frame with thread. I'm going to use my regular black thread. If you want to finish faster, you could use two or three threads for this part. I'm going to use two threads since I'm making larger wings. And then I'm going to use one thread of my shimmery black embroidery floss to add some glitter to the edges of the wing. Again, if you want, you could use two threads. For this part, I'm just going to use one. I'm going to do this for all of the wire frames. Now I've finished sewing all my wire frames. Now it's finally time to decorate the wings. To make it easier to work around the paper, I'm going to cut away the excess. Then I'm going to line up the frame with the paper design. And I'm going to use a couple of long flat pins to attach the paper to the tool temporarily. I'm going to use one thread of embroidery floss to copy the design of the wing onto the tool. I'm going to start with the orange part of the design, so I'll use my orange floss. So I'm going to stitch through the paper following my template and copy the design. I'm going to begin with a running stitch, going back and forth through the paper to create a broken line. and I'm going to pull the thread until there's about an inch of the tail left at the end. Then I'm going to stitch back through the running stitches that I just made, filling in the gaps just to secure the thread in place. And then I'm going to cut off the tail so that it's hidden in the tool. And now I'm going to do a back stitch all the way around the shape. First I'm going to move my thread to the back, the side with the paper, and I'm going to stitch a line up through the paper along the orange line of the design. and then on the other side, stitch into the end of the line of stitches that I've already made, to elongate that line. Next, on the back side, I'm going to space the needle out for about a quarter to an eighth of an inch, and push it up again through the paper, following the line of my design. Then I'm going to stitch back into the end of the last stitch that I made on the other side, back down through the paper.
and then once again I'm going to space the needle out for another quarter to an eighth of an inch following the orange line and push it up through the paper then stitch back into the end of the next stitch and I'm going to continue to do that until I've gotten all the way around this first line of my design. If you run into an edge or run out of thread, sew the end by stitching through the lines you just made for about an inch using a running stitch. Then stitch back the other way for about an inch, through the tool and the stitches you've already made but not through the paper, using a running stitch. Then cut off the thread so that the end is hidden in the line. Then start again the same way that you started before with a running stitch. And continue to backstitch around the shape. Once I sew my design down to the tool, I'm going to remove the pins. I'm going to do that with all the orange spots and all the yellow spots and some of the bigger white spots using those same colors of my embroidery floss. If the rest of the white dots are too small to outline, you could mark them with a couple of stitches and then just sew over them later. Or you could outline them with black thread instead so that the dots aren't as bulky when you finish. This will make it a little tougher to remove the paper at the end, but it'll look a lot neater. Alright, now I'm done copying the design. Now I'm going to gently tear the paper away from the stitches on all of my wing pieces. This will make it a lot easier to remove the paper than if I wait till I'm done filling in all the colors. And now I'm going to fill in the colors of the design. I'm going to fill in the yellow spots first. So I'm going to insert my needle into one of the yellow spots and leave about a half inch or so of the tail. Then do a running stitch along the yellow outline that I've already created. And then stitch back the other way through the other stitches to fasten the thread.
And now to fill in the yellow spots, I'm going to keep adding lines to the inside of the shape until I get to the middle. I'm not going to cover up the tool entirely, because I want to maintain the transparency of the tool, but if you prefer, you can cover up the entire area with thread. I'm going to do this for every yellow spot of the wing. Then I'm going to do the orange spots in exactly the same way. If you want, you don't have to sew into the orange spots since the tool is already orange. If you want the wings to be more transparent. But I'm going to sew mine a little just to add more color. Now I'm going to use my black embroidery floss to fill in the black areas of the design. And I filled in the larger white spots that I outlined the same way. And for all the tiny white dots, I'm just going to stitch over the marks that I made in a circle shape. Or if you outlined them in black, just fill in the spaces with white stitches. Alright, I finished filling in all the colors for the top right wing. Now I'm going to do the same thing for all the wing pieces. Here are two of my finished wing pieces, the top and the bottom wing. I'm going to use more of my black embroidery floss, you can use thread if you want, and I'm going to match up the top and bottom of each part of the wing and sew them together along the edge to create a full wing. Now I have two full wings, next I'm going to sew the wings onto a shirt. I 
I've already marked the shirt where I want to place the wings just behind each shoulder blade. So I'm going to pin the wings onto the shirt at the place where I want them to sit, making sure to align them symmetrically and to only pin through the back side of the shirt. And now I'm just going to use my black thread to sew each of the wings onto each side of the shirt. I'm going to sew the wings down along the inside edge and down the middle, where I sewed each side of the wings together for a few inches. And now my wings are done. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, give it a like or share it on social media. If you want to see how I made these smaller doll-sized wings, check out my other butterfly wing tutorial by clicking the link at the end of the video. If you want to help support me in making new videos, donate to my Patreon. It's entirely optional, but if you do, you can get some perks, like having access to my videos a week before they're posted here on YouTube. You can find more information about that in the description below. And if you want to see more videos in the future, subscribe to my channel and I'll see you all next time. Bye!